May God bless you. Welcome to our weekly message. Let us pray and see what the Lord would have for us. Dear Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We ask you, Lord, for a message that would touch every soul that hears it. We pray that it will be your words, Lord, and that it will go forth and touch every soul you'd have it to touch. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just. We know that he is. And we 
know beyond the shadow of a doubt that so many times He's been so involved in our lives. Every day, for example, somewhere, somewhere He's there. If not so many different instances. And we see Paul. He's told that he'll bear witness in Rome. And he doesn't know how he's going to get there. He doesn't know what all it's going to take to get to that place, what all he'll go through, what all God will steer him through and all the different times, the snake bites and the beatings and, and the healings and all things that are going to take place. But he knows that because he lives, because he said so, he'll get there. You and I, we walk in a world that would like to brush God to the side and say it's something outdated, just some old cultural thing that is gone. And it would like to put its computers in its high-tech ways and, and everything else first. And like to just discard the living God. But that's the thing, the living God. Not some wooden head somewhere. Not some pyramid or some temple somewhere that has no life, that has nothing in it. But a living God. Living God, our message today is going to be called live because Jesus is live. You know, we got the television sets, they say live from New York, live from Los Angeles, live from Europe, live from Moscow or wherever. Live television, live sports or whatever. And you'll see it right then and there. You know, I've been watching the playoffs, you know, live, you watch the game and you see all the plays and everything else, yes, but there's one that's alive. One that's alive that, man, when he decides to make a play, when he decides to do something, when he decides to step into whatever it is, oh, you'll know when Jesus Christ comes, what a day that will be. When all Knees bow and all tongues confess that he is Lord. What a day that will be. And brothers and sisters, that day is coming. And that day's coming a lot sooner than we think. And you say, brother, I don't know how all that's going to come to pass. So many will go to Revelation and they'll study through and through. And they'll try to predict what this means and what this nation is in the whole equation. And what this deal over here and that deal, looking for the... The, the chip in the head and the chip in the hands that they rumor are coming and all those things, the mark of the beast and all that, how it's going to play out. But I tell you, I don't know, brothers and sisters, how exactly all of it will play out. But I know that if he said it will play out, it will. If he said it will come to pass, then whatever way he brings it to pass, it will be here. If he puts in your heart that if you'll stay on this road, if you'll keep on believing for whatever it is, and he tells you so, then you take it to the bank and you trust him and you know that you know. And let us not worry so much about all the particulars and all the other stuff. But let us realize that when he said it, he meant it. When he told us, Jesus said, if it wasn't true, I would have told you. In John 14, when he said, I go to prepare a place. If it wasn't true, I would have told you. But it is true. I am going to do that. I am going to die for the sins of the world. I am going to come back in three days. I am going to do all the things that I've said I would do. There's this awesome bluegrass song. It's called, I am the man, Thomas. I'm the man. Look at these nail scars here in my hand. They pierced me in the side, Thomas. I am the man. After three days I rose, Thomas. I am the man. And Thomas had the privilege of seeing these things. Much like Paul, he had the privilege to see those nail scarred hands. To see that side. To see the Lord Jesus. And he said, blessed are you that you've seen, but even more blessed are us. Us that believe, though we've not seen, but we know that we know deep down that He is, that He lives. Because He lives, we 
can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds the future. Because he told us he did. Because he told us he did. Let us trust so much in Jesus. In his name and his ability to get us through whatever it is. And you say, brother, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what stands against me. You don't know what my situation is. No, I don't. But I know the one that can fix your situation. I know the one that can deliver you if it's something you need delivered from. If it's a mountain in front of you. I know the one that can move it. And I know that anyone that can come back from the dead he can do anything else because if he can conquer death, he can conquer sin. If he can make a bridge between us and heaven, then I tell you what, he can do all other things. Paul wasn't worried about Jesus failing him because he saw what Jesus did when he was out there on that road. When he was going to persecute the church, do all manner of mess, he saw he saw Stephen as he was stoned to death looking up and seeing Jesus at the right hand of God. He saw the joy that Stephen had even at death's door. The peace that this man had as he was being executed. All that resonated in Paul's mind, no doubt. And here Paul is converted himself now. And he's told, be of good cheer, Paul. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome and Malta and, and all over the place to a bunch of other places. Even the secular world accepts that the Apostle Paul did so much in spreading the gospel. Because he did. And the reason he would go forth and spread the gospel. It's because it's true. The reason that he was so effective. is because it's all the truth. And who was backing him? Who had his back? Who told him? You're going to bear witness of me in Rome. And oh yes he would bear witness in Rome. Right there in the heart. Of the capital of the, the modern world in that time. Kind of like the New York City. Of this world perhaps. Or or whatever giant city, the Paris, or, or if you will, whatever place is just a, the focal point of the world. He's right there. Right there doing the work of the Almighty. Because the Almighty put him right there. You and I, as we journey, as we journey home, because that's where we strive to be. If you've given your life to Christ, if you've read the Bible, then you realize that this world, in all its ways, they're not yours to have. They're not yours to truly be embracing and all that, but you serve a God that's so much higher. You're a citizen of a kingdom that's so much bigger than this world. And like the pilgrims of old, were pilgrims because they were modeled after the word of God seeking to serve God seeking a new land and we are pilgrims passing through these, these places that we're in on our way to a city that's builder and maker is almighty God Paul was on his way to Rome but that was a stop along the road to his road home he was a pilgrim Spreading the news about his home. Spreading the news about his Lord, his King. In the lands of so many other rulers. Spreading the news, spreading the truth. Letting people know there's something else. There's a kingdom. Oh, there's a kingdom that's so much better. A kingdom that's perfect. That eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard anything that compares to it. Well, I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Telling them, hey, there's something better. There's something so much better than all this. Be of good cheer, Paul. 
For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And he would go through. And he would make it to Rome. We'll hear later in the Bible where he says, I've fought a good fight. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've done what I was sent to do. Mission accomplished. I'm ready to go home. He's made it to Rome. And of course, he'll lose his life for the gospel. He'll lose his life, but he'll not lose anything, truly, because this life, this life is just this life. It's 40, 50, 80 years, whatever you get down here, walking around in some flesh and blood. And then there's that glorified body, there's that eternity to be gained from all those that will go to the end, to the finish line. You and I, you and I, we don't know exactly what all we'll go through. We don't know what tomorrow brings. You know, but just as the Because He Lives song says, we can face those uncertain days because He lives. He's live in heaven. Live anywhere he wants to be because he is the Lord Jesus. He is the King of Kings. He is the one with that name above all names. He is. Let us as we go, as we go, let us not worry so about the particulars, but let us worry about let us worry about putting him first. I don't know if I want to say worry as much as let us be concerned with pleasing him, following him, denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following after him. Let us make that our concern. Let us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And allow him to put everything else into place because he surely is able to do that. I want to read you in St. Luke chapter 10. In verse number 38, about two sisters. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Martha, taking care of the house, taking care of all that's going on. She wants to serve and to, to do all those things. And here's Mary. Mary's at the feet of Jesus. I want to hear what he's got to say. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. As we walk along this road, as we go in this life, just like Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, you know. You know he said, naked I came into this world, naked I'll leave. He goes through all that he goes through, loses all that he loses, and then God replaces it and blesses him and all that. But, but in this life, in this life we never know. But there's one needful thing, that no matter how long your house stands, no matter how long your car runs, no matter how long your you know, closet full of clothes lasts you and how long you wear those and your shoes last or whatever else it is, no matter how long all that lasts you or how long your job goes or, or whatever, there's one needful thing that if you've got that one thing, that pearl of great price, if you will, if you've got Jesus, if you've got Jesus in your heart, then it don't matter what else comes and what else goes. 
And we see Mary. Mary sitting there looking up, listening to his words, learning about him, getting to know him, seeing what he's all about. Because she realizes there's never been a man like that coming through her door ever. And there never will be again. Nobody like that. She'll never meet another one like this Jesus. And she wants to see what this man is all about. She wants to know. She's got the rest of her life to serve and to, to do all that housework and all that other stuff. But right now, Jesus is there. Right now, Jesus is there. And it's time to look and to pay attention and to, to get to know what this man's all about. Because this is that one needful thing that she's been looking for all through. Martha, on the other hand, more worried about the cares and concerns, the household and all that. A noble thing, you know, taking care of business. She thinks Mary's in the wrong because she believes that all that needs to be taken care of. But Mary, Mary's there. Look up to him. And Mary, Mary has said, One thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. She'll never have to say that she missed out when the Lord Jesus came by. She'll never have to tell anybody, The Master came to our house. The Messiah was in our house. And I was too busy in there washing the dishes. I was too busy in there cooking. I was too busy in there peeling potatoes or, or whatever type of food. I was too busy with all that. You and I, as we go through this life, as we go through on that road to Rome, you know, when I say Rome, that was Paul's destiny. That was Paul's end point before he would go home. It's where God had for him to be. And there's a place that God has for you. It's a place that God has for me. There's a destination for our lives. There's, there's all manner of things that God has prepared for us down here and, and surely to come in the world to come. But as we go through, as we go through it all, let us have that one needful thing that we're more concerned with than everything else. For so often, we get caught up in the hustle and bustle, the daily demand, and everything else that'll come. The serving, and amen, it's a wonderful thing to serve and to do all the things that we need to do. But truly, that one needful thing that we all need it's Jesus. We all need more of Him. We need that time with Him. That time one-on-one -on -one with our Lord. Because so many times, you know, as a minister, especially doing the five minutes with God, so many times you'll go and do those videos. And if I've not prayed and truly, truly allowed God to come into it, and so often it's just me, just running my mouth. And pretty quick you see that this video isn't good for anything. It isn't going to help anybody. And you can feel the difference when he's in there. And you know that, that God, God gave that message. God allowed that message. God did all that he did. Because if he's not in it, it's just words. If he's not in my preaching or, or whoever you listen to or whoever's preaching anywhere else, if it's not him in there, it's just some guy rambling on or some lady or whoever's bringing the word, whoever's bringing a message or, or whatever they're doing, if God's not in it, it's just a bunch of words. But when that one needful thing is there, when that one needful thing becomes a priority, 
we get down on our knees and we reach out to Him and we put it to Him and we give it to Him and say, Lord, Lord, I need you. I need your mighty hand and I need a touch from you. I need your spirit. I need you to be the one. I need you to guide me, to direct me. I need you to get me to Rome. I don't, <coughs> I don't know how in the world I'll get there. I need you to get me to to Denver or to Los Angeles or, or to wherever it is that you might be going or feel led to go for it. I need you, Lord, to take me to that place. Lord, I need you to make the way. When we spend that time with him, when we do what Mary does, and we get at the master's feet, and we look up to Him. And we seek Him. And we seek to know, know more about Him. To, to spend more time with Him. Realizing that He's alive. You know, we click on our TVs or whatever. You got stuff that's live. You know, here and there you'll find stuff. But He's always live. He's always right there. He's always given some kind of message, some kind of word, something is always there. And when we plug in to him, when we connect, you know how you connect to the internet, especially back in the dial-up days, how it would take a second to connect. And then suddenly you're connected and, and then all the information, all that's there. When we connect with Jesus, when we connect and we allow him to fill this computer right here up with all that he's got, all his information, all his love, all his direction, all that he's got to give. When we allow him to have free reign of these bodies, then all is possible. That relationship with him, that walk with him, that time with him, it's crucial. Mary realizes that that time with him is crucial. He's live right there. Right there in her living room or wherever he's at in her house. He's in her house. He's there. You might have a president or some, some congressman or somebody come to your house and that'll be some big deal to you. How much greater is it to have Jesus Christ himself set foot into your home? When he's there. There, it's all good. Everything can work out. Everything falls into place when he's there. But let us make time for him. Let us make him the priority. Because he is. That one needful thing. And that one. <coughs> that when he says... You'll get there, Paul. You'll bear witness of me in Rome, Paul. Be of good cheer. And you've got no other reason to worry. There's only saying, you know what? Jesus said it, it's going to happen. He said he's coming back. And I see a world that spins out of control. I see confusion. I see pain. I see turmoil. I see all manner of things going on. But I see that he said all these things would come to pass. And I see that he said I overcame the world. I overcame. For he tells us he tells us that he makes all things new. And he does. things new. He can fix all things. And he says in Revelation 22 and verse number 7, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Revelation 22 and 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
the first and the last. Let us serve Him. Amen. Let us follow Him. Let us please Him. Let us do all things according to His will. And let us always connect with Him. And recharge these batteries as we go on this road to Rome. And as we go on this road to home. Because He's live all the time. You can always tune in. You can always call on Him. You can always do all things. Look to Him for all things. And I tell you what, brothers and sisters, we need it more and more. These are the hardest times, I do believe, in the history of the world to live. Temptation is everywhere. It abounds all over. The devil is out to destroy so many in this hour. There's so much just crazy off the wall stuff going on right now. People dying for no reason. People killing for all, no reason at all. People doing things that don't even make sense. And especially not to the secular world, but to us. To us, the spiritually minded. We know that the spiritual war is in full effect. That all hell is coming. And all of the good things, anything that stands for God, anything that stands for truth, anything at all. Because the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He's out to take as many down with him. But we also know that while the devil is out to destroy all that he can destroy, our Jesus has only gotten sweeter. He's only gotten better. And he's still reaching out to so many saying, Won't you come? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Mary takes the call. Serious. She comes to him. She wants to see what he's got, what he knows, what he's all about. Martha's still working and troubled about many things. Mary ain't worried about none of it. She's worried about Jesus getting to know him. That's her concern. That's her, <coughs> her priority. Excuse me. That's everything that we need. That one needful thing is Him in our life, Him in our walk, Him in every little nook and cranny of our lives. The world is, is busy. There's so many things on your plate, so many on mine, so many on everybody's plate right now because the world is spinning faster and faster. There's so many distractions wanting to keep your eyes off the book. Wanting to keep your eyes off the goal. Wanting to keep your eyes off even the Rome that he's leading you to. Whatever destination, whatever place, whatever purpose he has for your life. So many things to try to make you feel like you're nothing. Like you're inadequate. Like you'll never amount to anything. Like you have no purpose. Like you have no meaning in the kingdom of God. When that could not be further from the truth. For God has made you for a specific purpose. Just like Jeremiah just like Jeremiah, he knew it before he was formed in his mother's womb. And you think he didn't know you too? You think he doesn't have a purpose for you too? He's not willing that any should perish, as 2 Peter says. But that all would come to repentance. Not willing that any should perish. But that all would come to repentance. What a beautiful, beautiful thing to know. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his 
promise. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Let us be that people. That people found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, walking in the way he would have us to walk, being found the way he would have us to be found, having that one needful thing and holding on to it so tightly that no matter what happens, we're not shaken. Know that old song, I shall not be moved. Let us not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Don't let us be moved. Let us be standing firm, standing on the promises of God, leaning on that everlasting heart. Because I tell you, what he said, he meant it. When he said, He'll be back. He said, I'll make all things new. When he said, I'll be back and I will take care of it, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. When he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. He meant it. Let us be about his business. Let us be about living for him like never before. For this world and all that's therein, there's no future. There's no future in this world. We can go on with this world and we can burn up with it. And we can end in a hell. And we can be in eternal darkness and eternal flames and all that. And we can get all we want of this world. God didn't tell us that we couldn't do it. He didn't tell us couldn't go and sin. He just said, don't sin because if you go that way, I'll tell you what's down that road. Nothing, the broad path leads to destruction. He told us that that's where all that leads. So he said, walk the straight and narrow way. Keep your eyes on the prize. Follow me. But he doesn't keep us from going that way. We have that choice. Let us choose rightly. Let us choose Christ. Let us have that one needful thing. Let us be about his business like never before because there's nothing better. And truly, there's nothing else. When you're looking for life, if you want life, life is in Christ. Everything else is dead. This world, it may look like it's mighty and doing all manner of things, but this world, this world is not going to last. Nothing here is going to last. But Jesus, our Jesus is never going away. Our Jesus has prepared a better place for us. And if we'll live for him, if we'll take up our cross, deny ourselves daily and follow after him, and be those pilgrims passing through this world, passing to a perfect city whose builder and maker is God. And everything is there for us. Let us believe. Like never before, if he said it, he meant it, and it will be. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, if you've not said, Lord, I want to live for you, if you've not asked him to forgive you, and it doesn't matter how you come to him today. 
You could have been anywhere. You could have done anything, been anyone. You look at the Apostle Paul. There's no worse individual that you'll ever know of than one that went and persecuted the very people of God. But yet he was turned around on the road to Damascus. And he was made this great, great missionary of the gospel. This great minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his life touched so many and remains touching so many even long after the man is gone in the flesh on this world. All that God used him to do, his testimony, who he is, what the Lord let him write, what the Lord gave him to write, still touching so many souls. And you, brother and sister, no matter who you are today, no matter where you've been, what you've done, you can give your life to Jesus. You can get on this road. That one needful thing, Jesus Christ, He can wash your sins away. He can make you clean and you can walk with Him. You can go forth from here on. Won't you give your life to Him today? Won't you pray this, pray this prayer with me and give your life to Him? Dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I ask you to come into my life and to take over in all ways. I ask you to be Lord of my life. I want to follow you in all that I do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, read your Bible, follow after him. You may stumble at times, but ask him to forgive you and continue on this road. Just like Paul, he didn't know how he was going to Rome, but he knew that Rome was there for him to go to. He knew Jesus. Jesus had already done all that he'd done in his life, and he could take him there, and he could take him on to heaven. And brother and sister, he can do the same for you. Trust in him, pray, talk to him, and ask him to help you for, for whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you might be struggling with. Ask him to help you, for he's able, he's bigger than anything that you'll face. Be baptized and go forth for it. Find you a Bible believing church. Feel free to come watch these messages. We do one each week on the Five Minutes with God Facebook page. There's a Five Minutes with God message every day. Come be with us. Come, I guess you like our page, and I think it'll come in your news feed. If not, just click over to it every day or whenever God leads you this way or find you somebody preaching the truth. Follow after the Lord. More and more. There's nothing better. That's the one needful thing that we all need. Brothers and sisters, let us all let us spend more time with Him. And then when we spend time with Him, when we've talked to Him, when we've, we've plugged in, connected to heaven, then let us go forth for Him, being lights for Him. And the more we're plugged into the source, the more we can let our light so shine. But let us believe Him and trust Him for all things, knowing who He is. And let us live the way He'd have us to live. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank You for all that You've done. We thank You, Lord, that You're alive up there every day for us to tune into, for us to be able to connect to and talk to, Lord, and to, to bring all our needs and everything going on, all our crises, Lord. Anything that we're going through, Lord, we thank You for being there, Lord, that You listen to us and that You love us, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're about to do, Lord. Help us, Lord, to put you first like never before in our lives. Help us to walk for you, Lord, more and more. Lord, please give us a hunger for your word, Lord, and to live the way you'd have us to live, Lord. Make us your people in every way, Lord. Make all our crooked ways straight, Lord, we ask, and help us to walk that straight and narrow way, Lord. We lift up so many that don't know you, Lord. Pray that you touch their hearts and lead them to you, Lord. We give you so many illnesses, so many things going on, financial woes and all other things, Lord. We give it all to you, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for all you've done and all that you're about to do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless you.